floating palace sailed from Southampton in 1898 on her maiden voyage. She was the biggest and grandest liner ever built, and rich passengers savoured her luxury as they journeyed to America. But the ship never reached her destination. A hull was ripped open by an iceberg and she sank with heavy loss of life. That liner existed only on paper, in the imagination of a novelist called Morgan Robertson. The name he gave to his fictional ship was Titan, and the book's title was Futility. Both the fiction and the futility were to turn into terrifying fact. Fourteen years later, a real luxury liner set out on a similar maiden voyage. She too was laden with rich passengers. She too ran an iceberg and sank. And as in Robertson's novel, the loss of life was fearful because there were not enough lifeboats. It was the night of April 14th, 1912. The ship was the RMS Titanic. In many other ways, and the similarity of their names, the Titan of Robertson's novel was a near duplicate of the real Titanic. They were roughly the same size, had the same speed, and the same carrying capacity of around 3,000 people. Both were unsinkable, and both sank in exactly the same spot in the North Atlantic. But the strange coincidences do not end there. The famous journalist W.T. Steed published in 1892 a short story which proved to be an uncanny preview of the Titanic disaster. Steed was a spiritualist. He was also one of the 1,513 people who died when the Titanic went down. Neither Robertson's horror novel nor Steed's prophetic story served as a warning to Titanic's captain in 1912. But a backward recollection of that appalling tragedy did save another ship in similar circumstances 23 years later. A young seaman called William Reeves was standing watch on the bow of a tramp steamer, Canada bound from Tyneside in England in 1935. It was April, the month of the iceberg disasters, both real and fictional, and young Reeves had brooded deeply on them. His watch was due to end at midnight, this, he knew, was the time the Titanic hit the iceberg. Then, as now, the sea had been calm. These thoughts took shape and swelled into omens in the seaman's mind and he, as he stood his lonely watch. His tired, bloodshot eyes strained ahead for any sign of danger, but there was nothing to be seen, nothing but a horizonless, impenetrable gloom. He was scared to shout an alarm, fearing a shipmate's ridicule. He was scared not to. Then suddenly he remembered the exact date the Titanic went down, April the 14th, 1912. The coincidence was terrifying. It was the day he had been born. Reeves' mounting sense of doom flared into panic-stricken certainty. He shouted out a danger warning and the helmsman rang the signal, engines full astern. The ship churned to a halt, just yards from a huge iceberg that towered menacingly out of the blackness of the night. More deadly icebergs crowded in around the tramp steamer, and it took nine days for Newfoundland icebreakers to smash away clear. The name of the little ship that came so near to sharing the Titanic's fate? She was called the Titanian. The story of Reeves and his Titanian venture, whilst a dramatic story, and also appealing, is probably total rubbish. Yes, there are many news sources that verify that a boat named the Titanian had to be dug out of the icebergs in April of 1935, but telegrams confirm that the boat actually hit one. The blow did not sink the boat, but damaged it, so Reeves did not actually prevent an accident at all. The Titanian very much hit an iceberg, it just didn't sink. The main source for this lovely legend, though, is Reeves himself. In a 1967 story in Seabreeze's magazine, he penned the story that became the reference point for the future legend. There's no one you can count on more to inflate his role as a hero than the hero himself, and Reeves appears to be guilty of that. He even fabricated the position of the Titanium to further emphasise the similarities to the Titanic, moving it almost 400 miles from its actual location, and giving longitude and latitude coordinates that don't even exist. 
In the end, we still have a fictional story that nearly predicts the Titanic 14 years earlier and a real life avoidance of a disaster of a similar nature 23 years after the Titanic, both dealing with boats of almost the exact same name. Now you have to admit that that is quite strange.